Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to this online event series, Catholic and Christian Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. My name is Elise and I'm the organizer and fellow panelist in this project. Um, this is the Q&A section of video with my very, very good friends, Rachel and Keith. And, um, and just FYI for all of you, this is the first time that they're meeting each other by, through this project, but they're very, very good friends of mine for the last almost 10 years. Um, all right, guys, so let's kick this off. The first question is from Michelle. Um, do you think or believe that other minorities besides Blacks are being treated poorly in the same way? And I'll turn this question over to you, Rachel. Wow. Do I think that other minorities are being treated um, poorly? Um, I think yes. I think um, I think I think many minorities are being treated poorly. Um, if you look at, uh, for instance, uh, I was one of of a fortunate uh, few, I guess, if you will say, who got to travel to the border of India for a cultural trip um, uh, for a school. Got to go down there for um, a, tr a trip. And we also got to learn many uh, different things uh, when we were down there. Um, uh, when, when I was there, I got to see a lot of the way women were treated in India and women are, are, the, are the lesser in India. But then a couple of years later, um, I got to go to um, the border uh, with just a group of, of, of colleagues. Um, I'm an ordained minister. We went down and we got to see how uh, the folks were being treated at the border and the children uh, were being locked up on the border um, and held in captivity. So I guess if you look at how different 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 cultures, different races are being treated, I guess um, I, I guess I can say it just, you've got to be specific and you've got to really kind of pay attention to how, how different minorities are being treated. And I mean, they're still being locked in cages, um, on the borders. So that I don't call being treated very well either. So that's what I think. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, we'll, we'll circle back to, to discuss a little more um, in a moment. Another question that comes from Bob is, uh, what can I do so that Black lives will know that their life is safe with me? And this is a question I'll turn over to you, Keith. Uh, it's just pretty simple. Don't be racist. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why we're having like such a hard. People are having such a hard time with it. I mean, it's this has happened before. This will happen again, unfortunately. But it's the exact same scenario. And you know, and and usually what happens every time is somebody says, "Well, you know, hey, I am, uh, you know, this person, and I am being racist to this other person." And now all of the people who are being treated in a racist manner are upset. And they ask him, how do we solve the problem? And the answer is simple, don't be racist. It's like, and why are you expecting me to solve the problem for you? You already know. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, you don't work at Walmart. You don't have to follow me in the store to make sure I'm not stealing anything. It's okay. I'm there shopping too. <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't have to, you, you know, you don't have to go around and say, you know, hmm, do I, am I treating white people and black people differently? You already know. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, don't be racist. I guess I could have just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith, for sharing. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, let's circle back to all these questions in a moment to discuss a bit more. Another question that comes from Michelle is, um, in what ways do you continue to experience racism? So I'll tackle this one first. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really interesting the way that racism creeps up. Sometimes it's really obvious, like racial violence. And everyone knows what violence looks like 
when it's paired with slurs, when it's paired with um, phrases that are referring to slurs and history of racial issues, then it's pretty obvious. Um, and it's not really a matter of like, well, did they mean what they said? The behavior backs up what they're saying. Um, when it comes to like microaggressions, I feel like this is a place where people get really confused based on, is this my intention? Do I even know about the racial history? And therefore, can, can someone justifiably interpret that as racist behavior? Um, I think people can get confused about that or make it confusing. And I think there's a lot of things that play into that. Some of it might be fear of doing the wrong thing and being called out. So making excuses, trying to divert the attention and avoid the, the tension. Um, sometimes it can be a, a fear of losing relationship, like not just getting in trouble for something for whatever reason, but also what if I lose a friend? What if I lose this client? What if I lose my job? So I lose it with my employer. What if I lose um, the, the comfort of living next to my neighbor? What if all these things, different types of relationships. So then out of a fear of losing the relationship itself and whatever is part of the benefits of having that relationship, people might try to bring up other possibilities. Um, and to all those possibilities, I, I think, and other ones that I haven't named, I think what I would posit is um, one, of, one of the things that is most difficult in experiencing racism is to be invalidated about the real and lived experience of the person, the way that it impacted them, the, the way that it makes them stay up at night, the way that it makes them question their security in the world because of one person's behavior, because of another person's behavior, and then the compounded effect of all these individuals' behaviors and words that make them feel like, I'm not safe. I can't live and exist the way I am. And, and so um, I, I, you know, looking at the actual effect on a person outside of medical, like if you do a total um, diagnostic assessment to rule out for a person who has yeah. a condition of paranoia or delusion or psychosis, outside of those rare moments, it, when there's so many people who are having this share a similar shared experience of being invalidated with their personal narratives um I, I would return the question of not just do how do i individually continue to experience racism but mm, how can we better listen you know that's what i would return as an answer to michelle and others who share that question of how do you continue to experience racism is well, how can you and how can we create spaces to listen better within ourselves when it's a one-to-one -one space and when it's a group space? Um, so that's what I would return as, as my answer. Um, so, you know, we, we, we both, all three of us, we kind of tackled the, the questions individually. I, I want to share the um, space now for reflections and thoughts that you might have, Rachel and Keith. Um, for the questions that you didn't answer or further thoughts that came up as we, um, as we tackled some of these pieces. What do you think? Well, for me, like the question that you asked me earlier, um, as I, I reflect back and, and my question that you answered me, that you asked me, like, um, you know, even with uh, folks that have been in this country, um, were born in this country that, that um, are now having to question whether or not they they they're they're being shooed out of this country is that being fair to them now you know because whether or not or or their parents are here like being shooed out of this country because of whether or not they're naturalized citizens i mean is that being fair to them those are kinds of things is like those are not being treated fairly 
those things are now coming to mind. I mean, because the question to me is, as I was thinking about it, I was even talking about things outside of this country, but even in, inside of this country, those things come to mind. And, and these are clients that I see, and it's like, you know, I've been here my, almost my entire life, and I don't know what to do now. Um, and that's talking from a, a practice of people who are totally afraid. I've lived here, and now I don't know what to do if I were to leave. So, you know, I look at that, um, and things, things of to those nature. And, and I also think about, um, as a, a Caucasian person, but also as a, a, a lesbian, I think to myself as, um, I, I don't always know, um, the right thing to say. So I, I will be the first to admit I am not the wisest person and I know I need to listen. I will admit it. I need to listen. I need to ask um, for guidance. I don't want to be the person that, um, that tries to say that I know the right thing because I think that's making a mistake. I would rather ask and learn from my peers and say, you know, show me, tell me because I want to do the right thing. But I also know that I experienced some things that um, from being in a minority myself and um, try to show um, others and, and, and teach others um, from my own experiences. So there, there are all kinds of different things that happen in, in, in our world. So Rachel, you, you've hit on a couple of really interesting things that I was actually going to piggyback on and kind of talk about. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is probably going to sound pretty cruel, but in my defense, it came from my own therapist. <laughs> so, you know, every time I would talk about things not being fair, the first thing she would say back at me is life isn't fair. And I was so mad at her initially when that stuff happens, but, but being able to kind of dive in that lets me deal with the reality of what life really is. So that kind of takes me to the next level of just recognizing, is it racist? Is it not racist? Right? We've all had, pro I think that we've all had moments in which we've at sometimes been purposely racist. Um, you know, I will admit to that many, many moons ago, please don't go looking around for it. I already feel shame and I apologize now. Um, you know, for uh, and when we've been accidentally racist, um, you know, my my accidental racism came in a few actually just within the within the last year when an Indian friend of mine brought a script in front of me and I had an Indian character that I had to read out loud and then I started in with an accent and she looked at me and said, please don't do the accent and immediately I felt, uh, crap. So, you know, it just leads you to like, think, okay, you know, what are the things that I really got to think about? And the things you just you really got to think about is just like, am I treating somebody in a way that's still going to allow them to smile? Or am I treating them in a way that's going to make them frown and go, oh, you, 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 you don't, you don't know what you're doing. You know, like there's those two, there's those two different things. And I think it's just equally understandable with racism. It's like, okay, look, do I need to identify with every letter in LGBTQ? <laughs> I'm sorry, no, and I forgot a couple letters that got added, that got added afterwards, right? I forgot the T. Uh, no, I didn't know I added the T. I don't know how to spell. But the point is, like, I don't need to identify, do I need to identify with every single letter, you know, intrinsically, or do I just need to realize that these are people too, and have that conversation, right? You know, I mean, it's, it's pretty much that simple. If I'm not having the, hey, you're a person just like me conversation, I'm probably thinking about me, you know, me here and you down here in some way. And no, I don't think we need to do that. Because again, life isn't fair, but you can be equitable in how you treat each other. There's like, yeah, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I have like five thoughts because <laughs> I'm like connecting with like both of what you guys are saying. And I feel like Rachel, like I really appreciate, you know, like that you're approaching these conversations about race so humbly that you're like, I want to be taught. I want to, I want to do things. I want to do right by my friends and, um, and by my clients and my colleagues. And I, I like, like I, like the way I know you and stuff, I just, really appreciate that respect um 
And Keith, I'm also like connecting with you about like, um, like kind of like, I feel like from what you're saying that there's like an encouragement to um, not feel less than in this conversation because of something that like basically none of us control and none of us have asked for, like none of us, like Rachel, you didn't ask to be born white. I didn't ask to be born Asian. Like Keith didn't ask to be born black and et cetera. Like we're just what we are, right? Like we were just, we're made this way. And, um, and, and by so, the way, my, I'm, mine, is, mine is the most beautiful and handsome, I should say. <laughs> oh, but you are, darling. You are. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now I've derailed, now I've derailed Elisa's thought. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I, but I mean, like, that's the way I'm connecting with stuff because, like, I know you guys personally. But I also want to check in, like, am I hearing you guys right when I'm like, because I'm kind of like reflecting back what I'm, what I think I'm getting. And I want to check in, like, am I hearing you right? Yeah, I, my, my, my thought is very sincere in the fact that I want to be um, honest in the fact that I know, um, I, it, it, I want, I know that I don't, I don't know everything. And you know that I'm very, I'm, I'm the most honest and humble person. I know I don't know everything. And I'm willing to admit that. And I have been told that before. So I'm willing to accept that and take responsibility for that. That's pretty much where my stand is. Mm. And I'll take that. Yeah. That's that and that's where I come from. That's that's where that's where I am in that whole position. So I'm more coming from the space of I will listen and take direction. I guess that's the state that's the space I'm in. Yeah. I don't need to be a leader in that space, but I'll I'm more of a follower. Yeah. In yeah. that space. That's a beautiful intention. It's so approachable. And Keith, like, am I hearing you right too? Well, if if by hearing me right, by you, the rewind. If by hearing me right, you say you hear that Keith is saying that he is always right, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> I am always right all the time. Here's the challenge with that. So are a lot of other people, right? So what happens when you get one right and another right come together? It doesn't matter, right? You're just looking. You're just looking for agreement in terms of moving forward and that's the way you know treating people like people so that's you know, a bold that, statement that's a pretty bold statement keith well it is and again you know i say it so boldly because i'm so right but <laughs> but you know what you know what i mean right what happens when you get into a room where people are like so you know entrenched in one thing and, and entrenched in another thing it's like you don't you don't try if you're trying to convince the other of of something else right that's a losing battle Right. So you start looking for agreement and looking for the spots where somebody can go, oh, yeah, you know, me too. Right. So, you know, I'm not going to look for you know, it, it's going to manifest itself for me in making sure that, you know, I'm looking at people and saying, you know, hey, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking for connection. Uh, you know, I'm making sure that we're having a conversation and everybody feels like you know, they're being treated on the same level. And um, I, I'm doing my best not to st say stupid things like, you know, OK, here, here's to one of Elise's microaggressions. Elise, I'm going to do a microaggression now. I hope I don't traumatize you. <laughs> sure, let's do this. Let's, I, I should probably share with the viewer that you have a background with theater and performance. So, yeah, go ahead. You know, and, and thank you for recognizing that your English is amazing. Microaggression. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I... You know, you know, and it's just like it's just like one of those little things that you just go on, oh, man, right? So you just you don't you just don't do that, right? Yeah, it kind of it does make like a funny moment, right? Where like funny as in like an awkward moment. Um, yeah, it makes for a moment that makes people uncomfortable. You know, like um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you back. I'll I'll take the pressure off of you for a second. Thank you for participating in the microaggression. And again, I apologize. <laughs> 
um, you know, one of the things that I used to get a lot, um, you know, back in, back in my day when I had hair, um, you know, people would say, wow, Keith, your English is so good, or you don't speak like other black people, you know, and it's one of those things where, you know, people who do not regularly complete sentences are amazed at your ability to complete sentences. And you're sitting on the other side going, why am I listening to this person who is struggling to complete a sentence? Compliment me on my ability to complete a sentence. Um, you know, that's a long way of saying, you know, I'm biting my lip to say, I really don't want to call you out as stupid as you are right now. But that's the kind of stuff that happens, right? You know, and it's just like that one little thing that just starts to just pull people just, just to, right? Or, you know, you have to start qualifying yourself, uh, you know, within a conversation just before you say something incredibly racist, like, I'm not racist, but, and you know immediately, you're like right after the butt, like, yeah, you're not racist, but you're really gonna power through it. <laughs> but I'm just like, you know, no, it's like, or, you know, I'm not gay, but just stop, stop. It's like, stop, all right, I want you to think about the rest of that sentence before you say it, <laughs> right? And then they start saying the sentence, and you're like, no, 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 just don't, don't say the sentence, just, just don't. <laughs> The sentence, right? But but that's like that's all of the the casual ways ways that kind of racism kind of manifests itself. And the solution to that is not to you know, I mean, understanding and having understanding of other people and other ways that you know you live and such is is tremendously important. Don't get me wrong. But the solution is before that. It's just uh, simply just don't be racist. Like don't do the stupid crap. <laughs> Yeah, it takes a certain level of self-reflection for some people to, to get to that place of realizing it more clearly. And for some people, it takes not that much effort. They, they already know what they're doing. It's more intentional, like where it is in their brain of processing is different per person. And I feel like that's part of the challenge. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, um, do you guys have any concluding thoughts for, um, for Michelle, Bob, or Michelle or Bob or Michelle, um, about the way that minorities may be treated poorly or helping black people know that they're safe with an individual or how we continue to experience racism? Any concluding thoughts? I think that they should go talk to Keith. He knows everything. He just said it. <laughs> right, Keith? He'll give you a good laugh along the way, too. Passive aggressiveness in her is strong. <laughs> <laughs> laugh with me. <laughs> oh, Rachel, that was beautiful. Um, you know, I. I'm I, I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. I mean, not that I want to pick out curtains or anything, um, but even so, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you, you know, I would, okay, so to getting to Elisa's question, I, I want to be helpful. I do. I don't want to just make jokes. Um, if there's anything that I can encourage you to do at this point, is recognize that for some reason, in this moment, there is some kind of paradigm shift. I don't know what happened within the last several weeks because you know the the killings have been happening continuously. The videos have been happening, and people have still been denying you know racism or you know still going out and being racist or being you know and and piling on on top of that. But nevertheless, I, I cannot tell you what in the last several weeks has changed except that something has changed and that there is momentum that's happening that's different than the momentum that's happened previously within the last 10 years. Um, and in this moment, you've really got the opportunity to do the things that, you know, Elisa has been talking about and Rachel has been talking about, about learning about the people around you and going in and, and uh, exploring other people's lives which are not similar to yours and being able to do so without any judgment, being able to ask questions which, you know, lead to more intelligent questions and more um, introspection and really help you understand, you know, what it means to be uh, a citizen 
around you. And by that, I mean, not just being like a citizen of the US or a citizen of Canada, but just being a good citizen to the people with whom you may inter or may not interact on a daily basis. Um, it's tremendous that this is happening right now. And it's tremendous that we have this opportunity because in the end, despite all the pain, you've got the, you've got this chance to really be in a different place. And I mean that, you know, in terms of your own personal spirit and leading you in a way that means that you don't have to be managed by the status quo that is happening in the outside world, but you can use the reflection upon the conversations that you're having now to be able to draw your own conclusions to help you lead your best life. I'm not gonna tell you which way that you should go or which ways that that should happen. I will tell you that when those conversations happen, take every single opportunity to you know be at your best to you know hear and to ask those questions which are going to lead you to better understanding um and if you don't know how to ask a question say i don't know how to ask this question so you can preface it to somebody so that they understand that you know what you may be trying to ask may not come out in the most positive manner but they'll still be willing to you know help you understand um it's a, something that actually um you know, somebody when I was when I was working in my teens and I didn't have an understanding really of what gay was and I was working with this person on a daily basis and this person kind of helped me understand, um, you know, really helped me get past the, you know, the schoolboy jokes and really get to an understanding of what that meant for this person and that way, that way of life um, and leading me to deeper understandings of people and being able to just treat people even more as, as people. And I don't bring that up just because we have somebody, you know, who identifies um, you know, in LGBTQ and all of the other letters that way. I say that to say, hey, you know what? I don't interact with, uh, I wasn't interacting with folks on a regular basis, but because of that experience and because of the willingness of that person to answer questions for me, I was able to go ahead and do so. So now that I've yammered on for, you know, at least, you know, three or four minutes, um, you know, I'll just say once again, I am right and I'm fabulous and I didn't share my phone number so no one could call me. <laughs> Well, thanks you guys for each of your thoughts. And um, I, I, I do have one more thing to say that really quick. The one thing that um, has been easier for me is that um, I think finding um, my own um, f feelings and being able to um, it's easier to find a healthier modality once I was able to identify my own feelings um, and it was able to respond in a healthier way. Um, once I was able to find my own feelings um, about race and racism, um, it was able to have a better conversation once I was able to kind of come to some kind of conclusion about that. I was able to, to be able to have some kind of conver conversation um, with other people and, and things I could, I could have a conversation a little bit easier. So when you start having, being able to come to some kind of conclusion with that, you can talk to people a little bit easier. So start coming to understand what your feelings are. And so you can have a conversation with people. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Don't just sit there. Talk. Have a conversation. Like we're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. This is important stuff. Yeah. Silence is not like we like I said before, you and I had the conversation. Silence is not going to do any anything. Silence is not going to do anything. It's not going to make any changes. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I really like this um, this grouping that we have because, you know, all of our journeys have brought us to a point where we can have a conversation. And um, part of that is because of the existing relationships that we have. And some of it's because of the environment, like you're saying, Keith. Um, but a lot of it has to do with that personal journey to be willing to talk to someone who looks different than ourselves and, um, and to be willing to enter that process. So I appreciate you guys showing up, you know, today with 
the fullness of yourself, keep with your humor and satire and, um, and still like giving things for people to think about Rachel with your, with your compassion and your humility and your courage to also come forward and be so honest about, um, things that are humbling in this conversation. And, um, yeah, I, I, I love having you as my friends. And so I'm looking forward to the conversation that we'll have. Um, I'm sorry that I have to keep a watch on time, but it's been so fun. And with this, we'll close the video and stay tuned. But God bless. Bye. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.